Oh, I didn't see you there. How you doing? My name is Shelby Gogreve. I'm a senior on the 2014 IU softball team, currently modeling the Adidas 2015 turf model. Gorgeous, right? <laughs> So, the reason you're watching today is because we are about to have a special feature on the 2014 senior class, our farewell to Indiana University Athletics, um, so I hope you enjoy. Sitting down with our first senior in the 2014 class, Bree Saucedo, thank you for sitting down with me. Mm -hmm. So I want to start off, it's well documented that you've had some injuries over the course of your career that missed the better portion of your junior and first senior season. Yeah. Now you're in your fifth year, but coming back this year, you're batting close to 350. That has to just feel amazing that all that hard work, all that rehab that you did has paid off. Yeah, it really does. Um, I think I've been so anxious the past two years to come back and play, and I've worked so hard, waited so long for the time that I can have on the field, and I feel great about what I've been doing. So Was there during those two years that there were some days you just wake up, your legs are hurting, you're saying, I can't do this rehab, this is too much, but then you see the rest of your teammates out at practice and you say, this is why I'm going out there each day and doing it? Um, I've only had, in the two years that I got injured, I had one day that I really struggled with. It was after my ACL surgery. Um, I think it was three days after I was doing rehab and I was just in tears from pain. As soon as I left, I, it was a complete switch. Like. I went and saw my teammates that day. Um, I think seeing everyone, like practice, really put it in perspective for me that one day I am going to be in, be with them on the field. So while I can, take in everything I can from seeing what the game looks like from the dugout to understanding the game in a different way. Um, so I think my timeout really help me. When, when did you kind of first realize that? Was it relatively early in the process or when you kind of saw from the dugout, oh, I see this, I can do that, or something in the field that you I think really early on. I think my first game out, um, the day I hurt my, um, broke my foot against Ohio State my junior year, um, came back the next day and the game just looked completely different. Like seeing everything from the dugout was just it, it was like a whole different world. Like you see the game so much differently and I honestly think it helped me understand softball better. And let's go back to your first two years. You're one of only two Indiana players ever to lead the team in hits throughout your first two years. What did that say? You come up right off the bat you have so much success. That had to have felt really good. Um, yeah, I mean, it did feel yeah. good. <laughs> um, I think... <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It was a good feeling. It was good to know that I was, you know, one of the players that did something only another person has done before. Um, I think it put a good sort of pressure on me to keep up what I was doing, to get better every year. And Even though I didn't play the next two years, I feel like this year I've, I've come out and still tried to be as... And the field that's right behind us, that was something that was promised to you guys during your recruiting process. Mm -hmm. What's it like playing on this and kind of just looking out at it now your senior year and playing on it for the second second year of its inception? Yeah, I think it's awesome. I'm, I feel like everything happens for a reason, and I am so thankful that I get to play on this field. It's gorgeous. I love it, and I'm excited that I got to play on it. Bree, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Now with our second senior, Jenna Abraham, one of the starting outfielders for this year's team. Jenna, let's go back to your first year here. You weren't only a part of an NCAA tournament team. You were playing in the NCAA tournament. You got a hit against DePaul. What was that feeling like when you're not just a freshman on an NCAA tournament team, you're contributing to that team? Um, that was a really incredible feeling. Um, being in the NCAA tournament is just awesome. Like, it's, You get all these stuff that you just never even realize that people get and it's just a really incredible feeling and um, getting that hit was cool and it just kind of for me it's kind of what I expected of myself um, mm -hmm. and as a freshman I kind of was like I said earlier was shy and kind of played play a little different than I do now and so for me it was like I got a hit okay now let's go back to the dugout you know and I was kind of quiet but it was a really really awesome feeling to be able to be a part of that and having Morgan and being with all these amazing girls like that team was just really incredible so and being with some of those older girls that you could kind of be a little bit shy mm -hmm. and be a freshman did that help you develop during your freshman season because it wasn't just the NCAA tournament you right. were a force the whole season long um, yeah, most definitely. The older girls and the seniors in the class were just incredible. 
incredible girls and like that's a team that I will always remember you know coming in as a freshman year with these older girls and that's who you will always remember and always be with and um, I got lucky because Morgan Mello I played with her in high school too so we kind of grew up together so that was cool because in high school she was at my pitcher my freshman year and then here she was my pitcher my freshman year so that was really neat and made it a lot easier that I came in knowing somebody and Morgan of course being from Indianapolis mm -hmm. you as well you're actually the only senior out of this class from the state of Indiana does mm -hmm. that give you a little bit more pride to put on this Indiana uniform yeah at each day? definitely um, I've always wanted to be a Hoosier so Growing up and finally getting to do it and knowing that it's kind of coming to an end is kind of like, it's a little, it brings a little tears, but it's cool to see Indiana on my chest and have, be able to be lucky enough to have my family and all my friends get to come and watch me play from my hometown. And now sitting here as a senior, you have to then now develop the leadership role. You have to be that calming force on mm -hmm. the team. What's it been like now? stepping in from a shy freshman to now being a senior on this team? It's actually been kind of natural. Um, I've kind of done that like in high school too, but it's kind of at those roles, there were holes and I needed to step into them. And I'm the oldest person playing in the outfield and that's been easy for me because I see the younger girls that come in and especially this year, the younger girls and I have really good connections with all three of them. And I just felt like I needed to help them. And that's kind of my personality, I like to help people. And I saw them struggling and I need to help them. I'm not the kind of person that's going to sit here and yell at somebody. I'm the person that's going to take them under the wing after they've been yelled at and be like, all right, this is how we're going to work through this kind of thing. So it was kind of natural for me, but um, I've really actually enjoyed doing it. It's helped me make better connections and friendships with all the girls. Jenna, thank you very much. Thank you. Shelby Gogreve, the next to join me in the hot seat. Shelby, thank you very much for stopping by. Thank you, Will. So Shelby, this season... The, the numbers aren't always going to be spectacular. They're not, you're not going to have a 350 average and all that, but you're going to be a defensive player, and you're going to make sure everybody knows where they're supposed to be, kind of a selfless leadership role that you took on. You get clutch hit after clutch hit. You advance the runners when they need to go. And like I mentioned, defensive plays are what you've specialized in this season. Is that something that took a little bit for you to kind of grasp, or were you fine with that role right away? No, I, you know, I've always been the player that, um, I've always been great defensively and, and offense is somewhere that I've not necessarily struggled with, but it hasn't always been the strongest point in my game. And so I've always known, I had a coach a long time ago that told me, if I'm going to be on the field, that I always need to be contributing in some way. And so if that's the way that I contribute, if that's my role to stop every ball that comes my way, stop any ball that I can in the 5-6 hole at third base, you know, that's what I do, and I'm happy with that, and I know that my how vocal I am and, and that defense and that energy that I give to the team is, is very helpful. Because if people have watched this team, you're standing at your third base spot, and you're always going back to the pitcher in the circle, letting them know that everything's all right to get through that next pitch. And so there's that calming influence at third base, and people don't really realize that when you're playing in at the bag at third base and you make some of the plays that you make, they're, you make them look a lot easier <laughs> than they should be. Thanks. No uh, problem. Yeah, you know, I have a very close relationship with my pitchers, and they, there's so much pressure on them throughout the game, you know, throwing strikes, making plays that come back at them. They control the pace. They do so much. So anything that I can do to ease their job is what I'm going to try to do. And, yeah, it, I enjoy it. It certainly helped out the pitchers, I'm sure, in the circle. And um, now getting back to this field that's behind us right mm -hmm. now, you guys played a little bit further down on field lane and a little bit of an older field, yeah. not necessarily as sparkling and brand new as this one with the little batting cages. <laughs> not exactly. Not just playing on the field, but how much has it helped this team from a day-to-day -day standpoint that you can, guys can go hang out in the locker room, go hit in the cage and things like that that you weren't able to do your first two years here? It's incredible. Um, at the old field, we had outdoor hitting cages, so we didn't really have that to go 24 hours. Now with our hitting cages and we all have our keys to get in, we can go and hit whenever we want, 24 hour, 24 seven. And that is incredible just with how much extra work that we can do on our own. And then outside of that, you know, we have this incredible field that is so resistant to the weather that we get in Indiana. So we get out here as soon as we can and having this beautiful stadium that invites so many people, invites so many fans, people who have probably never seen yep. softball games before. It's just, it's incredible. And now a little bit off the field, you've become a somewhat of a singing sensation, singing with Victor <laughs> Oladipo oh, yeah. during the award ceremony. Is there going to be some singing in your future, or uh, are you going to stop with that? How's it going to work out? 
Um, you know, in my perfect world, I would love to spend the rest of my life singing and have a career singing. Um, that's knowing that I have singing in the future is kind of what's m making me okay with my transition out yeah. of softball because I know I'm going to have something else to put all of my energy in, something that I love just as much as I love softball. So I'm very excited about that. I hope to pursue a singing career in my future. What's scarier to you right now, a spot bottom of the seventh, bases loaded, two outs, you're down by three runs, you need a grand slam, or are you singing in front of 3,000 people? Oh, my goodness. Putting you on a spot right here. <laughs> um, it's, def it's definitely on the softball field. I'm, I'm very comfortable with performing, and on the softball field, if I don't perform correctly, it affects a lot more people than just myself. So. And has that singing, that pressure that you being up there by yourself, has that kind of helped you get up to the plate sometimes in the field knowing that I'm okay, I've done very hard things before and this is just kind of, this is softball, this is fun? Yeah, you know, it's it's more so that um, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable under pressure. I'm, I'm comfortable being nervous and I think that some of my teammates will tell you, my coaches will tell you that I'm I'm much better in clutch situations than I am when nobody's on base. Or, and I think that's because I'm comfortable being uncomfortable. Shelby, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Jenna Malmain joining us. Jenna, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And Jenna, you came here a little bit of a different route than the rest of the senior class. You transferred from community college. Mm -hmm. What made Indiana so special to you and why did you know you wanted to come play for the Hoosiers? I wanted to play for the Hoosiers because when I visited the whole athletics just felt like a family atmosphere rather than the other schools I visited I felt like they were kind of separate from the university but I felt like this was more of a family and it was really athletic oriented which made me really excited. What was the biggest difference from you playing in the community college level to going to division one softball? Was it a tough transition or did you find it relatively smooth? Um, I found it smooth. I felt like it was an easy transition. Um, overall the resources here are just terrific and like so much better than the community college I came from, just like all the resources I have, the weight room, the, you know, the field here, it's just so extravagant and I was so excited to come here. And then just off the field, was it an easier transition than you anticipated it being, meeting new teammates, getting along with new teammates? Oh yeah, I mean they embraced me with open arms and I felt so comfortable with them already and um, they already had an apartment set up for me so like it was pretty smooth, like I didn't have any complications or anything, but, excuse me, <laughs> anything like that, and uh, just the teammates were so great. And now being an upperclassman, going back to last year, your junior season, what was your leadership role? Are you more of a lead by example, a quiet leader? How does that work for you? Um, probably more of an example leader. Like you said, I'm kind of quiet, but I just want to be there for my teammates, you know, especially in my role, like, that's all I really can do, so I just want to be there for them and just be a support role for them. And you mentioned the field behind us right now being right. as extravagant as right. it is. Playing on it, being able to hang out in the clubhouse, being able to go to indoor hitting cages, that is not something that softball teams around the country, let alone teams in the Midwest, get to use. So what's it been like for you and the rest of your teammates to use it? Um, it's just so great because no matter what the weather is, you can go in and get some extra cuts when you know other teams in the Midwest can't really say that. Um, it's just a great resource no matter what you want to do. Get some extra cuts, you know field some extra balls with the dirt we have here. It's just so amazing. No matter what time of year, you can get some work in. And in your three years, what would you say your fondest memory is of putting on the uniform? And was it a certain game? Was it a certain play you made? Um, not certain plays so much. I would just say being a Hoosier in general and just the friendships I've made here with all of my teammates. And when you look back, you're just going to think of all the people you met and like the experience you had. And I think overall, it's just a great one. Thank you very much, Jenna. Yeah, thank you. Megan Murphy, the fifth and final senior to join us in this senior feature. Megan, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Megan, it's been a very eventful four years for you. You've played in an NCAA tournament, you've thrown a no-hitter, and then now your senior year and your junior year, you move into a new stadium. What's the one thing that kind of sticks out to you throughout those four years? Um, I'd have to say just, I think, the memories um, with, between meeting new people every year and um, coming into a new stadium, a state-of-the-art stadium, is basically what sticks out most to me, not necessarily a win-loss record or, um, I mean, the no-hitter was fun, and I'll, I'll never forget that, but more so the, the relationships I've built with the girls and the people that I've met here, um, it's kind of a bittersweet moment for me to talk about because 
I was, I was just thinking, like, this is my last time I'm ever going to play here. So um, the memories I'm going to take from here are the most important things to me. And going back to your freshman year in 2011, you guys make the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. You participate on that team starting some games. You weren't a pitcher coming into uh, Indiana. You started in the outfield, so you didn't <laughs> become a full-time pitcher until your sophomore year. But right. what was the time like going on that ride as a freshman, have your team go to an NCAA tournament? It was awesome. Um, I wasn't really quite sure what to expect so I think just soaking everything in and knowing that since we had a pitcher like Morgan I wasn't going to be the pitcher that year and that was okay with me because I mean she was so successful for our team and as long as the team was successful I couldn't really ask for anything else so I embraced my role as being an outfielder and sometimes being a designated hitter and um, and then going to NCAAs was awesome I just remember one of my favorite moments is actually the selection show uh, when we found out who we were playing, we were going to DePaul, um, or we were going to Missouri to play DePaul. Um, so that was really cool. Like just being a part of that experience and saying that I've been there is really awesome. And you mentioned Morgan Mello, your freshman year. She's one of the greatest pitchers the school has ever seen and one of the best in the NCAA during her time. Yeah. What was it like learning from her? Because you didn't pitch that season, but then you come back your sophomore year, and that's where you really started to become the pitcher that you are. Yeah, um, Morgan and I have a really special relationship because we're both lefty pitchers, and... I learned a ton from Morgan. I, if I have to say, I think my sophomore year is probably my most successful year, and I attribute a lot of that to what she taught me. And um, she kind of gave me a different perspective on the game. She wasn't. I looked at her more as a friend um, who was really knowledgeable about pitching and not necessarily a coach. So that was that was nice to learn from her. Um, but I would say that I, it's a blessing that Morgan came here, and I'm so lucky that I got to um, play under her and and play with her and have her um, by my side to help me become more successful. And then you mentioned the no-hitter a little bit, but what was the feeling like during the game and then after the game? Because I'm sure pitchers will say, I wasn't thinking about it, I didn't know I was throwing a no-hitter, <laughs> but really deep down inside, you know when you get to the sixth <clears throat> inning, there's a zero up on that scoreboard in the hit column. That had to have been something just to kind of look back and say, wow, this is special. Yeah, I don't really think it hit me until... until I heard coach say that was a no-no. Um, I mean, I obviously knew. I actually didn't know until the fifth inning, or the fourth inning, excuse me, because it ended in five, I think, um, that I had a no-hitter going. And I was like, whoa, that's pretty good. And then the other team was kind of heckling me in the dugout, um, like they wanted to break it up so bad. But um, that was a pretty awesome experience. And I mean, if it weren't for my team and my defense, I wouldn't have had one, but um, that was... It was great. And, and you mentioned it briefly. You said this is bittersweet, saying goodbye, playing here in Bloomington. You look back and you just think of all the memories that you've had here. What's mm -hmm. going to be the one lasting thing that you think of and say, wow, this is really going to be tough to leave? I would have to say um, the girls I've just become really close with and the feeling of belonging to a team because I've played for so long and I've, I've played softball for 17 years. And I think having the game that I've, I grew up loving and playing all the time is just coming to like a screeching halt and in like three weeks I'm going to wake up and I'm not going to be a softball player anymore. Um, but I think that will be the hardest transition for me and, and of course moving back home I, I came here from Colorado because I wanted to go somewhere where I didn't know anyone and kind of create a new home for myself, a home away from home. And it's going to be hard to leave here. It's going to be really hard for me to leave Bloomington. Megan, thank you very much. Thank you, Will. Sitting here with the class of 2014, the seniors, Jenna Malmain, Megan Murphy, Bree Saucedo, Jenna Abraham, and Shelby Gogreve. These are the questions everyone wants answered, so I'm going to start off with a game show related question. If you were all on an island in Survivor, who would get eliminated first? I know you guys were laughing, <laughs> you guys were laughing before this started, so I'm going to ask if there's going to be a clear cut answer to this. Um. I think I'm gonna go with Jenna because she's a little broken already. <laughs> she's got bags and knees. She gets sick a lot, but we love her. <laughs> and Jenna, you raise your hand. Yeah, I pick myself. I don't think I do very good in the wild. When I go camping, I'm like a camper. I don't do tents. You guys have agree with that, yeah, Jenna? Agree. <laughs> who get who goes the furthest? Who can survive outdoors the longest? Oh. I might say Megan, because she's yeah. from Colorado, she does the outdoors. I was actually going to say that exact thing. I, <laughs> something about the Colorado thing has to be Megan. Yeah. I've been told that's pretty earthy. You can survive, like, 
I don't even think you get tents in Survivor. You have to make your own. You don't, yeah. Can you yes, create yeah, your own fire? Do you do? I would not do that. Oh. I think you have to create your own fire. I don't think you get any oh, sort of yeah. I could see Brie being pretty scrappy, though. <laughs> <laughs> Finding some crazy Yeah, survive. just putting something, being really creative, putting something together. Like feeding and off of small bugs. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to catch the bugs yourself, too, and then catch the fish. I think you could do that. To Perfect. survive, I think I could do that. So Jen goes quickest, and Megan lasts the longest. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, next question. Shelby, we know you're the singer in this group. That's no. no. <laughs> Who says? Out of the four of you guys, if we were doing an American Idol with this team, do any of you guys rock out in the clubhouse or in the dugout? I think Jenna. <laughs> Jenna does. Jenna can belt it out. Yeah. Does that I mean she has the best voice or does she just sing the most? She, I think she sings a lot. along with a lot of the songs. Like driving in class, I noticed yesterday, like every song that comes on, she just starts singing along, looking around the little world, like knows every word. Yeah. And Megan and I are her roommates too, and we've always heard Jenna rocking out in the shower, just <laughs> top of her lungs, <laughs> as loud as I can. <laughs> Beyonce, Pandora Station. Oh, I like country music a lot. Usually if there's any country song, I can I know most words. You and Brian, Jason, all Yes, them. yes, for sure. And the uh, loud pop songs, I can, you know, I, I'm really bored with those. <laughs> I've, I've noticed I've been around this team for throughout the whole year. Frozen is the, I feel like, the main oh, yeah. <laughs> movie with this tea. Is that there any other single? Word. You know, <laughs> I do. You know. I do. <laughs> she really lets it go. <laughs> <laughs> We've we watched it, what, on the way home from Michigan. Michigan. How many times have you seen it before that time? Um, I got it in Michigan, but I watched it three times that week <laughs> after we got it in Michigan. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, on to the next one. Jeopardy, Wheel of Fortune. I think it was Wheel of Fortune that the kid here at Indiana had a lot of oh trouble. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me see that. Yeah, that, that was really bad. So if you guys were on that show, would there be something embarrassing like that? Or does someone here have a lot of just pent up useless knowledge that they could solve puzzles easily or answer just random questions? I think she'll uh, <laughs> She knows a lot of random facts. Yeah. <laughs> like random good facts or just completely random that there's no sense in knowing? Uh, I think they're usually relatively relatable. <laughs> I just, um, I definitely go on off on tangents a lot and come up with my own theories quite often. And she always says, "Guys, I have a theory. I have a theory." <laughs> There's a theory to everything. Did you guys feel for the kid though who messed up, or were you guys saying with that much money on the line, with the trips on the line, that you're not gonna mess up like that? And the, I think he looked silly. He made himself look really. It's pretty embarrassing, yeah. but I do feel for him because yeah. he probably was. Hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate you. Inches, too. Yeah. yeah. Staying on that embarrassing route, we've seen Kayla trip over a bucket, I think, twice this season. <laughs> and you guys have probably seen way more than that. But is there one embarrassing story through your four years, not just this season, that's appropriate that you guys can mention on video right now? And I know how this works. If you're not willing to admit something, one of your teammates is going to sell you out. So you better, you better think of something. I have a, a pretty fond memory of Shelby. I think our first year on this field, she was running home. <laughs> oh, and, oh and, I don't know if I she got some game. dirt caught up in her cleats or something. <laughs> <laughs> she was like 10 feet from home and just do it, doing one of these and just <laughs> fell into home. <laughs> yeah. I was safe. She was safe for the record. <laughs> Definitely embarrassing. And it was on the end of the year video too, so thanks Ashley. <laughs> Wasn't me. Did you, did, you, did, you, did, you, did you get ahead of the tag, or did the catcher just miss you while you were falling? Um, I don't think the throw made it home. Yeah. I think I was going to be very safe, and like I wouldn't have had to dive into home. But the the only way I could get there was like my last step, just like propelling and landing there. I think if I recall, you came up a little bit short, and then you just crawled the rest of the And way. my face was just covered in dirt, and I looked up. The whole team was laughing. The entire crowd was laughing. Like. Pointing, laughing, hysterically. <laughs> Good times. Was it? I know runs are important, but was it like a very important run that you needed to get home like that quickly, or? I don't, <laughs> don't recall. I don't believe so. I think we were having a pretty good game, but hey, you never know. A <laughs> run could come down <laughs> to the wire. I feel like all four of these girls could have said that it really wasn't that. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Any other stories that doesn't put Shelby on the spot that puts one of you four on the spotlight? I know Miss Abraham was a pretty good 
I do. My freshman year, I was so I was really quiet as a freshman, like didn't really ever say anything. So we were inside Mellon Camp, and we had you know the ball cards that we have, yeah. and they had those silly things on the front of them that stop and they don't move. Well, I was rolling along, and then all of a sudden it stopped. Flipped over, I flipped over the entire ball court, all the balls went everywhere, <laughs> and I just kind of laid there and I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> this is not happen. My face got like as red as your shirt. <laughs> as red as this. Yeah. Was it your one of your first weeks on the team? It was, was it like, relatively... it was one of my first weeks because I was injured coming in, and so it was like one of my first practices, and it was so embarrassing. <laughs> That's how you make your mark on the team. So though. I did it. So now all the seniors knew who you were right then yep, and there. Yeah, they did. <laughs> One of the best memories I have here at IU is <laughs> that image of Jenna flipping, flipping the like ball. it didn't just fall, like I flipped over the ball court. As the other freshmen on the team, were you guys like, oh thank god that wasn't me? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I just remember seeing it from afar and it was like, oh, well, that's nice to see. <laughs> I remember um, one practice we were in Mountain Camp and Jenna. Oh, Kept fouling all these balls off, and every time the ball happened to f come hit her on the head, like it bounced off of the the screen or the, our shell and bounced right in the head, hit off the wall, bounced and hit her in the head like four balls in a yeah, row. It, it was, was so, so funny. funny. It was a minefield. <laughs> it was hilarious. Like no matter where she was, like she was over by the wall, and still somebody yeah, else hit her. It was like a magnet. It was funny. So I just got my helmet on to get drinks and stuff. Like that. <laughs> Earlier this season, we started a Twitter hashtag called oh. the Brie Chronicles. Because, <laughs> yes. I mean, Brie, Brie is pretty composed. She's got very great poise, you know. She's <laughs> She always looks nice. She's gorgeous. So her nails are always done. So we're like, all right, we're going to start this Twitter hashtag, and we're going to say all the embarrassing and funny things we've ever seen. But none of them they came up with a lot. <laughs> Lies! Most of them were fake. I was gonna say I was reading most of them because I wasn't with you guys that week, and I was like, those don't seem real. Like, and then there were pictures of her with uh, next to somebody else, or like Beyonce. Yeah, it was Beyonce one. Yeah, and then there was there was Aaron Lehman, one of the freshmen, put a picture of her next to a very unfortunate looking person that she found on the internet, and they were both in like bikinis or something, or smiling. Aaron tweeted and said. Went to the pool with Brie last summer, <laughs> and this was us. Hashtag the Brie Chronicles. So you guys haven't caught Brie in one, in, like this is how you had to embarrass her because she hadn't had one embarrassing moment. I mean, we're sticking with appropriate, right? Yeah. We're <laughs> that's off the air. I mean, I mean, this is I'm pretty sure this is going to get rated right PG, <laughs> so we have to keep it relatively clear. On DL then. So, yeah. <laughs> But during rain delays, you guys create the Brie Chronicles. Is there anything else that you guys do during delays? Because this season, the beginning of the year, there were a lot of delays weather-wise oh that you guys had to deal with. We eat. Yeah. Yeah. All you think yeah. is hot dogs. We eat a lot. Yeah. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Hot dogs. Popcorn. Yeah. yeah, we eat a lot. The same day we created the Brie Chronicles, we were at the field for probably like 10 hours. Nine hours. Yeah. yeah. And we were just supposed to have one game, I think, so we were planning on eating after our game and then... Um, so we didn't have anything to eat, we had a few snacks, but we were all starving, so we had like 20 hot dogs. <laughs> we had our manager go grab them for us, and it was heaven. <laughs> on, on that food route, can any of you guys cook well? Is there one girl that you guys go to their house, or you guys... I can cook, really, yeah. Well, I, cook, yeah. I like to cook. What's the specialty? Hmm. I don't really, I wouldn't say I have a specialty, but I'll take something that I've never cooked and make it. I mean, make it good. Enchiladas, mm. fish tacos. Is there like a Team Taco Tuesday night? Or do you guys have like a set <laughs> night where it's go to Meg's house and she makes something? No, I feel like See, we did that a lot. Time. We used to do that more, like have everyone eat together, but um, not so much in season. It's a little bit harder. With Wednesday night games, sometimes Tuesday night yeah. games. Understandable. But I must say, Shelby's become quite the quite the cook since uh, she sophomore year. Another embarrassing story. Oh, this yes. is totally not softball related. But oh. Well, no, we, yeah, we didn't need to keep this softball. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just um, appropriate stories. That was the only thing, only guidelines. So, <laughs> so we, we lived in an apartment, Shelby, Jenna, and I, and Shelby had made bacon or something, and a little bit of the bacon grease like spilled over into the, the foil the thing by the, 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 the broiler. Yeah. And, she, I mean, she didn't see it, so it wasn't cleaned up, and she was boiling a pot of water one day, and I was oh, just, like, man. come inside, and the pot of water's, like, flames this big, like, 
engulfed in flames and the pot's just black from the, from the flames. We were like all sitting on the couch, Meg walks in the house and she's like, uh, uh, guys, like, what? There's ah! like a three foot fire in our kitchen. <laughs> Very frightening. I've made it through those tough times. <laughs> I've had some experience in the kitchen now. Always get at me. I'm domesticated. <laughs> Just kidding. There's the, kidding. There's the one plea we had during that video. So guys, lastly, I want to say, I want to leave it to you guys and just say thank you or whatever you guys want to get off your chest to the fans who have come watched you, who have supported you throughout the four years, who have now come to this beautiful field that we're sitting behind or that's behind us. So you guys can take it away. Yeah, and I guess a great place to start with the thank yous is the Varsity Club. I mean, IU Athletics, we're so grateful and blessed to have the Varsity Club supporting us every step of the way. So, we'll start with them. Andy Moore, Andy Moore. thank you. Thank you for this Beautiful field. field. Mm -hmm. So glad I get to play on it this year. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. I think um, thanks to all the fans. I know we've had a kind of consistent student base who's usually at every game. Mm -hmm. Mostly the boyfriends, but... Uh, <laughs> Just thanks to all the fans who've uh, come to support us. Shout out to Preston. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Louise. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you so much to the athletic department, Fred Glass, and all of our administrators are so great to us. So we appreciate all our time being supported by you our as well. Our families, thank yeah, you for amazing. supporting us, coming to our games, being there for us. All the little girls that come in. Oh my gosh. They love it. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy to be there. And we're happy to have them. And I can see it from here. Thank you to the field crew that gets the field oh, yeah. ready every oh, single yeah. day. Oh, countless hours nice. go into it. I just want to thank them real quick. Yeah. The 2014 senior class, guys, thank you very much. And thank good you. luck this weekend against Iowa and the rest of your lives down the road. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.